Doran Aldana here, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, and I'm coming at you with my man Chris Poliska, hailing from Southern California in the Irvine Cali area. Say what's up, Chris. How we doing? Yes, yes. And so uh, I wanted to share with you guys a really awesome story, a real life true story about how someone came literally straight in this industry with no experience, practically wet behind the ears, completely oblivious to what he was getting himself into. And within three years, I know I quoted in the promotion for this, it was three and a half, but Chris corrected me in advance of launching this thing. Within three years, he hit 92 million. And uh, it's just been an incredible uh, success story. And you know, behind every success story is a lot of grit, blood, sweat, and tears, hustle. And uh, Chris is certainly no exception. So I wanted to just kind of peel back the curtain and share from someone who's been there, done it, and has got the scars to prove it, what it takes to be in the upper echelon of top producers in this industry. And, uh, you know, give you guys the inside look as to what are the distinctions, the nuances, the secrets, the how-tos to take your business to the next level. So, Chris, thanks for being with us. And thank you for uh, taking your time to do this, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. So why don't, why don't we just start off with how you got into this crazy industry to begin with? You know, uh, I know you mentioned that uh, you were minimum wage. Uh, you had a minimum wage job before you got into this. Um, yeah. so obviously, making a little extra coin was probably one of the motivators. <laughs> tell, us, tell us the story, how you got into it. Yeah, so I was uh, I was actually parking cars, valley parking cars uh, at a fancy restaurant in, in uh, Newport Coast. Uh really high end, totally had to be on your customer service game. And uh, one of my regulars there um, or a gentleman that I met there, um, he happened to be a vice president for the company that I work at now, um, New American Funding. So I'd always be very polite to him, open his door, you know, do the whole shindig. And me and him got to chatting one day and he's like, man, you're really on it. You, you know, you got the service. And uh, I came to find out that he actually coached high school football uh, at my high school um, before my time. But uh, so we connected that way. And he's like, hey, if you uh, if you're willing to take some risk, because um, I was making some pretty good cheddar. It was minimum wage there. But I was getting some uh, some cash tips, which which helped. Um, so he's mm -hmm. like, if you're willing to, to take a little risk, um, I can help you get in the industry and you can earn whatever you want to earn for the rest of your life. Um, there's no cap on commissions, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, God, oh, well, I'm making good money here. I just graduated college, didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I took the leap and, and, uh, he brought me on board and our company, they have a, like a customer service center. Um, uh, that's a part of our call center where you just take inbound calls. Um, so I started in the call center. That was my first start in the mortgage business in the call center. And I was transferring live leads to, uh, to loan officers, uh, for, Back then, it was, I think, eight bucks an hour, eight dollars and 25 cents. Right. Um, so I, I put the cash tips on the back burner and, and, uh, jump, jump start my career, uh, through the call center at New American. And I mean, the ultimate goal was to be a loan officer. Um, so I, uh, uh, I worked there for about six months and transferred calls and worked, uh, worked from six to six every day, 12 hours, just transferring calls to LOs, learned a little bit about, what a loan was. I had no clue what a loan was. And, and then, uh, I had an opportunity to become a loan officer in the call center, but I saw the, the bigger, the bigger picture of, of creating your own business as a retail loan officer and, and, uh, creating your own relationships and, and, and the fruits that that brought you. So I made another leap from minimum wage going to no, no hourly base at all. Um, and that's, uh, and uh, became a loan uh, outside loan officer, um, and that was about three years ago. Um, at the end of this year, um, we'll be hitting three years. And uh, and so I was making zero then, and running around like my head cut off. I didn't know what to do. Um, was just trying to find as many realtors that I could, whoever would take my call. And then obviously that's when we connected. Um, and. Uh, and uh, you asked for the big bucks, and I wasn't making any money. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, you know, I, I I was like, I gotta find a unique value proposition and a structured way to take this thing to the next level. Um, and then obviously, I signed up for your coaching and and uh, put that on the on the Amex. Worried about it later, 
Uh, <laughs> and and uh, Richard you know, got, got yeah, that's right. Yep. So um, did that, and then obviously we started working together, and you gave me the marketing strategies and ideas on how to be more specific on targeting uh, top producing realtors, not just going after every realtor that that uh, that can breathe, because um, that was a load of waste of time. Um, so just implementing those strategies on targeting the top producers um, and building relationships with them and just having a structured schedule um, and getting a few of them on board, started closing some loans, and then implemented your database marketing strategies um, to get more referrals out of more referrals. And referrals turned into referrals, and, and uh, that's kind of where we landed. Well, this is, you know, a pretty extraordinary story to say the least. And uh, people listening probably are flabbergasted by, you know, the massive results you've gotten in such a short period of time. Tell us about the climb you've made from year one, year two, year three in terms of volume, if you recollect rough numbers in terms of how you climbed up. Yeah. So, I mean, the first year I literally had signed up with, uh, uh, literally signed up to, to, uh, with you in the first year, in the first couple months. So I think it was maybe February of my first year, and I think I closed one loan in January. Well, I ended up the first year I made President's Council my first year. That was thirty-five million. I think I did a, a smudge over. I was about thirty-eight, thirty-nine million. Um, right. In year two, um, year two, I uh, I got to I basically doubled that. I was about seventy million. Year three, I hit that. Uh, I've hit the, the ninety-two million mark. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at. And then tell me what you're up to now. I mean, obviously, uh, you're still doing your own personal production, but tell us what else is in the game now for you. Yeah. So we're, uh, uh, we're building, expanding. We're, we're always at, uh, top, uh, top five with, uh, my lovely competitor, Brenda Valenda, who, who you know. Uh, <laughs> and we're, we're cranking out about 20 million a month on average right now. I'm, uh, running the branch over here. Um, doing personal production and we're trying to blow it up to, uh, my goal this year is, to, uh, a hundred million, uh, all combined. So, um, in personal production and then another, not, not, uh, not few annually, hundred million. Not annually, but monthly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let's not get so. things twisted. He's not talking about the annual goal. He's talking yeah. about the goal. You know, most people, they're just think it's a dream to get to a hundred million per year with their own personal production. But when you take the leadership route, like Chris has taken, and you get to leverage the opportunity to build a team and leverage their time and talent. Now we're talking 10x that, 100 million a month, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So what an exquisite journey, man. Three years, 100 million, just shy of 100 million. Now you're talking about 100 million a month, working through team and building your team and, and helping them achieve their goals. It's not just about being the hero now, it's about making heroes. So obviously you've grown in leaps and bounds. Tell us about, uh, for, but by the way, those of you who are listening, watching, if you guys have any particular questions you want Chris to uh, answer for you, just pop them in the comments. I'll see them. And if uh, it looks like we have time, I'll pop them up on the screen and let Chris answer them. So any questions you have in particular that you'd like to get Chris to answer, hit us up and we'll get them fielded uh, at least for the next 10 minutes or so. And then uh, we will have to sign off. So. Let's get into some of the tactics. You, you, you mentioned that you're diving into uh, working with realtors, database marketing, maximizing repeat and referral business. Um, tell us about, say, the top, the top three strategies that have paid off most handsomely for you so far. I mean, I, I would say the number one strategy is obviously uh, is, is specific targeting of realtors. Um, I think a, a lot of, a lot of uh, problems that loan officers have um, a lot of problems that loan officers have is they kind of don't have a specific strategy on which realtors to target. Um, so that's, I think the number one most important thing is, is be strategic on who you're targeting. Like we have, I'm in Orange County, so we have a big market. We have over, you know, 35 cities that you can, so you can be, you know, two hours in one city and the other. If you're just driving around trying to find, just find, trying to find any realtor, um, that's not the most effective strategy. So getting a top list of a hundred realtors and even, even, uh, even crunching it down to per city. So what I did was pick three Pacific cities 
And then I put the top list and then I just targeted them through different marketing strategies and co-branded marketing strategies to help them grow their business and bring value from a marketing perspective. Um, we can close. We got great rates. We got great service. But there's a lot of companies that can perform that. You got to bring more added value to the relationship, help them drum up some business. So you make a really, really key point that I don't want people to overlook. You know, anyone can smile and dial, and I know there's plenty of coaching companies out there that will tell you to do exactly that. Smile and dial. You got your, you know, mad, mad calling Mondays, and you're smiling and dialing. But just because you've got a pulse, you can fog a mirror, and you do mortgages, doesn't give them a reason why they should work with you. So Chris talked about adding unique value, tuning into the station WIIFM, what's in it for me. And I think that's one of the reasons why Chris just launched like a rocket ship through the stratosphere and beyond in such a short period of time is he has a very coachable spirit. He's very willing to apply coaching. And that's one of the reasons why you're so successful, Chris, is not just because you're a pretty face. You're a, you're a hustler, you're a hard worker, but you're also very coachable. And you brought that coachability. You took massive action and you executed the principle of massive, unique value. And you made it a privilege to work with you as opposed to just spraying and praying, throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping someone's going to stick. So tell us about how you make it, um, you know, positioned in their mind as a privilege, as a, you know, VIP exclusive status, as opposed to just anyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror gets to get access to you. Yeah. So what I would do, um, so I, obviously I would secure a meeting, um, through, you know, whatever it may be, cold calling that be specific realtors or stopping by their open houses or different strategies on trying to touch them to secure a meeting. That's the first thing. And what most LOs do is even if they're pitching marketing or whatever it may be, is they get that meeting and then they come and they just dump it on them. They just throw up, throw up on them. Um, so one one key technique that that I really felt that was effective was I would that first meeting, which which is kind of part of, of of your coaching program, the discovery meeting, is really in that meeting I wouldn't really say too much. Um I would just I'd have that set of questions. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing now? Blah, blah, blah. And then I'd give them a little touch of some ideas that we can do, but I would assess their business. Um, on what they're doing, how they're getting their, their leads. And then I would go back, I would sit down and say, all right, here's what I have to offer. Here's the different marketing things that I'm doing um, and implement it that what they're not doing into their business to help them. And that's what really fuels the fire is because when you come back to things that they're not doing that can add value to their business um, and ultimately make them more money, that's when it's a true partnership. Right. So take note, folks, the show up and throw up ain't the best strategy. You guys have experienced that. You know that. And take it from Chris, the ask the right questions, strategic quality questions, shut up and listen strategy works a hell of a lot better. Wouldn't you agree, Chris? Yeah, way more effective. So you take yeah. them and listen. And then, of course, you're looking for the gap. You're looking for where they at now, where they want to be, and what's the gap between where they are and where they want to be, and how can you fill that gap? And that's the unique value. And it's uber relevant and uber valuable because it's customized for them. You're customizing your value proposition for net for them. It's not a all size. You know, every every uh, everybody's going to fit into the same box. Exactly. So, uh, obviously, that's been paying off handsomely for you. You got a solid stable of realtor partners. I think that's the lion's share of your business, right? Is realtors. Uh yeah. For the most part, I mean, now I get a lot of referrals from I. I my big thing is is having these different buckets. So realtors, you don't want to put your eggs in all in one basket. So now, of course, I have, when I started, there was no database. So I was took the risk on realtors to get it rolling. Um, I also targeted uh, home builders. That's really big right now. So that's kind of one of my buckets. I tapped into my network, um, like past alumni network. So that's one of my buckets. So I have about four or five buckets now. Um, obviously, when I started, I was fresh in the business. There was no database. There was no experience at all. So my first target was to get a few realtors under my belt and build that and then just build off that. And that's kind of how it how it trickled. Awesome. So for those of you who just tuned in, uh, this is Dorn Aldana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, hanging with the one, the only Christopher Poliska from Irvine, California. Went from zero to just shy of 100 million 
in three years. Yeah, you heard me right, in less than three years. And now his next goal is 100 million a month. He's already doing 20 million a month. He's building a team. He's taking names. He's chewing bubble gum. He's crushing it. And so we're unpacking what he's doing. You guys have heard some tactics some strategies. Let's talk now about um, database marketing. What have we found to be most effective when it comes to database marketing? Maybe the top one, two, or three things. I mean, uh, the big ones for me are probably the uh, annual mortgage review. Um, sending that, a lot of people neglect that, but uh, having a specific mailer for that and actually making calls for those people, I tend to find out even if their rate's the same, like, you know, loan officers will look at their database and go, oh, well, the rates are four and a quarter, his rate's four and a quarter. I make, you know, we I reach out to those people no matter what because uh, they might want to take cash out. There's opportunities to take cash out. So that drums up another thing or just to chat with them. They might have a friend or family. So that's what worked really uh, well is, is, is being consistent um, from when I built my database on those annual mortgage reviews. Um, birthdays, sending out birthday cards and following up on birthdays is an, another effective uh, database strategy. A lot of people, if you really think about it, a lot of people don't call you on your birthday. So that's super special to them. They really want to go out of your way to, to help you out if you can. Um, because most people these days just text you a happy birthday. When you get a call, it's kind of shocking to people. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes their own family don't call them on their birthday. True story, man. True story. Um, Best friends and, and close family, nuclear family, don't even call. They'll send a text. I mean, how lame is that, right? Yeah, and I think I think the the one biggest the one biggest struggle that I struggled with early on too is not only on the database side, but just in overall is AFB asking for the business. Mm -hmm. um, if you do a good job for somebody, just asking, um, you'd be surprised by just asking how many more referrals that you drum up, whether that's from a realtor or from your client. If you did a rock star, five star service, you know, great, you can send them these thank you cards and all, but if you don't get on the phone and say, hey, I did a great job for you, do you know anybody else I can do a great job for? Or, hey, I closed this loan 15 days earlier. Any other clients that I might be able to help you out with? Your numbers double overnight if you're doing things like that. Most loan officers don't do it. They do have these systems in place. At the end of the day, if you're not AFB and they ain't thinking about you. I like that. AFB. Always be AFB. And we've heard the ABCs of closing. Always be closing. Now we got the AFB. In. Yeah. And now you're achieving. That's how it works. Yeah. So um, now in terms of asking, we can ask and then we can strategically ask. Tell them how we're strategically asking, increasing the odds that they say yes by wowing them first, capturing the review second, and then going after the referral third. Tell us a little bit about how you strategically ask so that you tip the scales of fortune in your favor to get maximum referrals. Yeah, I mean, I, I always just do it at the high point. Like, what's my highest point? So usually uh, when their loan's funded or when they get their keys is a high point or when they get a gift from me. After they closed on their house, that's a high point. Hey, did you get my gift? Just you got to do it at the highest point of sat satisfaction for the client because then they're more willing to give right. um, at that point. So I would say that's just find the highest point. For some people, depending on your process, uh, it, it may be a little different, but you got to find out what's the high point of satisfaction for that customer, whether it's a realtor or whatever it may be, um, or if, if it's a database, if it's a client. You got to find the highest point. That's when you want to ask for the business. Amen to that, bro. I call that the MMS, the moment of maximum satisfaction. That's, that's when you right. want to come up with the ask. And let's face it, they want to help you. They want to share the love, but you got to ask because if you don't ask, they're just not going to think about you. As much as they might love you, they got other things going on. So you got to ask. And ideally, you got to ask in a way that is cool and, you know, not too salesy or weird or. Right. You know, that makes them cringe. So you got to ask in a way that's comfortable. And if you feel comfortable with it, they're going to be feel comfortable with it. Exactly. So uh, we got some questions that have been coming in. Uh, Brent L. Emler, he, uh, he asked this question. Uh, he says, what percentage of your personal volume is past customer repeat business? And what percentage of your personal volume is past customer referrals? Um, well, I mean, now, uh, obviously, there was there was none of this in the first right. really uh, year. Um, but uh, I would say uh, past customer repeat business. Um, I, I'm doing a lot of purchase business right now, so that's pretty steady. But I do probably do about 
uh, 20% of my business is, is repeat clients. And then another, these are rough numbers. I, I have all the data, but not in front of me, but, and I would say probably about another 10% is past customer referrals, 10 to 15. So maybe 35 to 40% is, uh, is these two categories. Awesome. Another question that recently came is from, uh, let me hide this one here from Scott Tennant. He says, what does your production, uh, team look like? So I'm assuming like, you know, uh, how many people you have on your team and what butts you have and what seats in the bus. Yeah. So, uh, I'll just, I'm going to answer this question from a personal production standpoint. Um, cause I think that's more relative. Um, so, I mean, we run a tight ship. Um, it's, uh, currently, you know, how I ran most of my team was one assistant. Um, and she, uh, we do a little bit of Hispanic business. So we have, a, I have a junior LO who handles that. And then, uh, we, I have one assistant and she basically does mainly all the, the grunt work as far as collecting the conditions, um, doing the actual process. And I am, uh, mainly just hitting it on the, on the, the touch points and communicating with the realtors. That's like my main goal. I'm, I'm where I can get more referral opportunities really is where really, I'm really only involved in the transaction. I've trained my LA up on income. She knows how to put it all together. She has a question. Of course, she can come to me. Um, so we have, so right now we have two dedicated processors, one assistant, a junior LO, and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's all you really need. And, and, uh, you, if you, if you delegate it enough where you're just at the touching points and you're mainly in the sales, um, and get the talent in the seats that can handle it all, you're, that's all you really need. Yeah, I've never heard of anyone getting to a hundred million beyond. Uh, shortest period of the cash, lowest hanging fruit, wearing all the hats, being the chief cook and bottle washer, doing it all themselves. And can't do it. Still remaining sane and having a life. I've never heard of it, not once. And so if you guys want to take your business to the next level, you got to really look at what can you delegate off? What minutia can you offload? You know, you can get a part time spare time virtual assistant to start just with admin tied to marketing and then ramp up to getting an LOA or someone to help you with operations. Chris didn't get there doing it all himself. He started out rainmaking and then as soon as possible, we got top talent to help him with operations and admin tied to marketing. So you could focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing because yeah, we have, I have marketing too. That's another position. But yeah, I mean, in the first year I was trying to do, I ran with one assistant and was trying to. That's basically it, me and her. And I tried to do a little too much in the loan process, but to get it to the, that 92 million, uh, in one year, it was, I had a marketing person and I would just delegate all to them and the loan LOA who handled all the loan process and then the, the junior for the Spanish and all the other help. Um, and, and that's, that's what took it to the next level. Awesome. Yes. From Rob, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name, Rob. <laughs> I'll just share your question. Um, Chris says, are you licensed nationally? And if not, what market are you in? If already said, I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm in, uh, Southern California, Orange County specifically. Uh, the company's licensed in 48 states. Um, I'm currently only licensed in California. Um, our company's unique where we have a setup where, um, we refer those, those out of state deals to a licensed loan officer. Um, who works out of our corporate office in Tustin. So we are able to cover 48 states. So if I get a deal, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll put it in, but I'm specifically only licensed in California, but we can do multiple states as a company. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's get into uh, mindset. You've got a team of how many people now? How many LOs on your team in your branch? Uh, 13 LOs. 13 LOs. So now you're in a position where you know, you're grooming people, you're coaching people, you're mentoring people. It's a total different game than having total locus of control doing it yourself. But now you got to transfer your mindset, your skill, your wisdom, your knowledge from your brain into their brain. And that is not an easy feat. So if, if people, um, you know, on this webinar or this um, live cast right now are wanting to get to another level, but they've been spinning their wheels, they've been frustrated. Uh, and chances are you've encountered, Chris, people on your team in that same position, spinning their wheels, frustrated. What would you say 
is the biggest piece from a mindset standpoint that's really the precursor to breakthrough results. Because obviously you're living it, you're living the dream, you're creating creating breakthrough results, but that was an evolution. That was a learning process for you. And you've learned a ton in terms of the inner game of success, uh, more so than just the tactics and the, and the strategies. So tell us about that. What does it take from the inner game to really take that leap to the next level? You know, I just, you gotta, you gotta find your why. What's your why? You know, what's, everybody's got a different why. Why do you get up every day? Why do you want to do this? What, you know, what's, what's your why? But on, on, on another note, like from a tactical standpoint, I think it's, it's impossible to get to the next level without a schedule and scheduling it and sticking to a schedule. Um, I, I, I find a lot of loan officers, uh, say they're going to do something someday, but they don't have it on their schedule and there's always an excuse to do it or not, or not do it, um, for that matter. Um, so, coming up with a schedule and say, all right, I'm going to commit. First, you got to find your why. If you don't know what, why you want to get to the next level or what, what it's going to bring you or what the fruits are, then, then, then you're stuck. The schedule's not going to do anything because even if you have it on your schedule, you're not going to do it. So, um, but I think those are probably the two most important factors is, is, is finding your why and then scheduling out how your, how the results that you want to achieve, the activities that, that you need to do to achieve those results. So what was your why when you got started and what's your why now? Um, so, I mean, for me, I've always just wanted to be, be number one. That's a, I'm a big, I mean, the money was important. Um, so that was obviously I wanted to, I just, I wanted to, my why was I wanted to, to be, be number one. I wanted that. I've, I've played sports my whole life and I've always wanted to be the best. And that just comes from the sports background. And, and, uh, Everybody was saying you can't do it. So other people ultimately were my why because they're like, you're too young. You can't do it. Um, you know, you got to once you're in the business for 10 to 15 years, that's when you'll really start being a top producer. So that was kind of my why um, when I got it rolling. I didn't really care what the commissions looked like. If my name was number one on the leaderboard every month, I was woo. You know? right. um, you gotta be the top so, dog. Yeah. Um, so that, but that's changed a little now. I mean, my why now is, is, you know, I'm having my first kid in, in, in any day now and, uh, it's creating generational wealth for my family. You know, I don't want to be freedom. Freedom's my why now. I want to have freedom. I, if I want to, if I don't want to do this in 10 years, I want to be able to say that I don't have to do this. So that's why I wake up and, and crush it every day. Work because you, because you have to. Yep. And before success was optional, now your baby girl's coming down the pipe, so now it's mandatory. Right? Exactly. <laughs> no excuses. I know a little bit about that with four kids. So, yep. you know, before I had four kids, I had four theories for parenting. Now I got four kids and no theories. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to just uh, give people a shout out, remind people what we're here for. In case you just tuned in, we're with uh, Chris Poliska, New American Funding. Irvine, California went from zero to 92 million in three years. So uh, obviously this dude knows what it takes to grow a business and grow it fast. What have you found, Chris, to be the most valuable pieces of the puzzle that working with me? I, I don't want to necessarily have you, uh, you know, do just like a, a blatant promo for me, but I want you to do more of a promo for the principle of coaching and the principle of mentorship and the principle of having someone who's already got the proven formula to ex expedite uh, one success. So can you speak to that? Yeah. I mean, I mean with you, I mean, you're, you're, you're very similar and always trying to find the next deal for mortgage or next big, you know, thing for mortgage professionals in, in, and to provide value to, to get more business. And that's what I've always liked about you is a lot of these strategies that you've come up with, a lot of people aren't doing. So it gives you competitive advantage uh, in the marketplace because no one around you is doing what the ideas and the strategies and stuff that you're doing. Um, and you're constantly evolving that to technology. And that's why I've, I've continued to coach with you is there's always a new idea that brings more value for me, which in turn brings more value for for my business and my realtor partners. So that's, you know, that's what I really, you know, you know, highly, highly respect what you do is you really care about being innovative and, and not just having a platform, but always continuing to build that platform 
um, and, and new and fresh ideas. Well, I appreciate that. I, uh, I definitely uh, am a brother from another mother when it comes to Chris's philosophy because he's always looking for adding more value. He's always looking for ways to peel back the layers of the onion and uh, be able to have more potent power and profit in the business. And guess what? You don't get power, potent, and profit unless you add more value. Value is the driving force. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about you, Chris, is you're never complacent. You're never, you know, the kind of person who'll just sit on your laurels and, uh, you know, just say, hey, I did a great year last year. I think I'll just coast. You're always driving. You're always hustling. You're always saying, what's the next mountain I'm going to conquer? I'm not going to slide down, down old mountains. I'm going to climb up new ones. So that why that you speak to, I think that you know, white hot fire of desire to keep climbing is certainly one of the things that you and I share in common. Never Definitely. be Never sit on our laurels. Never drift. Always be driving. You don't want to, you know, start growing mold or, you know, growing moss. We want to keep moving up and keep moving forward. So um, from that standpoint, I have uh, a last call for questions, guys. If you guys have any last questions, we are going to uh, do a last call for questions. Otherwise, we're going to sign off because we're pretty much just about up on time. Um, if you guys want to get insight as to the secret sauce mechanics behind how we took Chris from zero to 92 mil in three years. You guys want to take a closer look at the specifics in terms of the tactics, the strategies, the done for you, uh, marketing systems that undergird everything that Chris does from what he does with his realtors to what he does with his database marketing to mining the gold from his database, maximizing repeat and referral business. And you guys would like to get clarity, massive clarity on where you're at, where you want to be, and how you can get to that next level. Shortest path to the cash, lowest hanging fruit. I invite you guys to take advantage of a complimentary strategy session. This is what uh, catalyzed and launched Chris into a conversation with me three and a half years ago, almost four years ago now, that has been uh, one of those relationships that we both have not been able to shake off. He can't shake me <laughs> off, I can't shake him off. It's symbiotic in that respect. Right. If you guys want to see kind of what the secret sauce is behind uh, Chris's extraordinary growth over the years, then I invite you guys to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough strategy session by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm going to type it on the screen. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So go over there. Uh, this is for the ambitious mortgage professional only. If you just want a tiny, minuscule uptick in results, this is not for you. If you want a monumental, unprecedented breakthrough result and you have the ambition, the grit, the hard work, the coachability and the integrity to take full ownership and do the hard work required to make it happen, then you definitely want to check this out. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Um, I see we have one more question that's come up. I Let me just take a look. What is it? Abel. Okay. Abel is asking, uh, Chris, I'm getting licensed soon. How should I approach it? So this is for a brand spanking new mortgage loan officer, wet behind the ears, wanting to ask someone who started from scratch from nothing. How the heck do I get off to a fast and profitable start? What do you think, Chris? Call Dorn out down. Well, you know, that's the uh, shameless plug. And honestly, <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it ain't me, you better find someone who gives you yeah, some yeah. damn good coaching. Some damn I would say, say proven my results. one tip would, would be be strategic and who you're targeting, um, realtor wise. Get 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 a list, strategic to your market, and go after those people and not just anybody you meet. Because because times are the essence, and there's only so many times. Are so much so many hours in a day. So you need to maximize those hours in a day by going after uh, people that will produce results. All right, I hope that helps. You definitely want to get clarity on your action plan, Abel, and you want to be able to uh, target the right people with the right message, with the right unique value proposition, so you get the right kind of response. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of smiling and dialing with not a whole lot of results. You can throw a lot of yogurt at the fan and not have anything stick if you have the wrong approach. So definitely want to dial in 
on um, a proven method. And if it makes sense to do so, give us a holler. Go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm going to put it up on the screen one more time to schedule your appointment. Uh, free session, free coaching session. Here is the URL right there. Free session, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Matt Powell's asking, when did you start coaching? Um, I think it was, uh, what was the year, Chris? Was that 2014? Uh, 14? Yeah. Yeah. So I hopped on in and uh, I did like, a call center in 2013. My first, yeah, 2014. February 2014. Right. The first year you did about 38 mil. Next year you did like 70 mil. Next year you did 92 mil. Is that about right? Yeah. So not, not too shabby. <laughs> not, not too shabby at all. And I don't take all the credit by any stretch. Chris is a hustler. He's a baller. He's a mover. He's a shaker. He takes full ownership of his life, full ownership of his mindset, full ownership of uh, everything in his business. And that's why he's such a badass producer because he doesn't make any excuses. You know, he's got the mantra, screw it, let's do it. If it is to be, it's up to me. And that's why he wins. So if you guys want to win, you got to think like winners do. Um, Brent, by all means, share this interview. Uh, anyone who you think it would benefit, by all means, share the love. Sharon is caring. So, uh, Chris, last words for folks who are listening and watching, you want them to marinate their mind on as they leave this interview. Um, find your why. What's your why? You got to start there you know, before you do anything. What's your why? Find your why. Really think about it. And it's got to be powerful in everything you do, whether it's you want to lose weight, you want to make more money, whatever. What's your why? You got to really dig deep and find that. And it's not just about knowing what your why is, but believing you're capable of it. Rarely will your results in life exceed that which you believe you're capable and worthy of. You, may, you might have a why that says, hey, I want to do 100 million like Chris. But if you don't believe you're capable and worthy of it, you ain't going to do it. You know, yeah. you got 1% doubt, you're out. You got to own it. You got to claim it. You got to believe it. And as Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. So, Chris. You're a rock star. I appreciate you. I feel very privileged uh, to be not just uh, your coach, but your friend. And uh, I'm looking forward to many more good times together as we continue to climb new mountains and uh, conquer new summits, new peaks together. And um, I never take it for granted, man. You are uh, someone that I count as truly one of those uh, co-conquerors in life that I can go into battle with knowing that you never settle, you never be complacent, you'll never be neglectful, you're always setting your sight on new summits, and uh, you're always committed to winning. And I really appreciate you. I appreciate the fact that um, you're committed to the people in your life, your clients, your wife, and uh, soon enough, your daughter as a newfound dad. Super stoked to see how you blossom and bloom as a daddy and uh, see you baptized into a fatherhood with some pee and poo all over you. So get ready. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> That's when it really gets fun. So uh, thanks again, Chris. Appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks. Talk to you soon. All right, everybody. Again, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply if you guys want to get the inside scoop on how we turbocharge Chris Poliska's career from zero to 92 mil in three years. Check it out, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply and book yourself in for a complimentary breakthrough session. All the best to you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. We'll talk soon. Goodbye, everyone.